get any work done? Anybody have any questions about their work or their creative process? Or should we have a pop quiz? If you're having trouble working, what's a really good thing to do? Change position. Change position? Oh, like, like get up and work in a different spot? Yeah, or just walk around and do something. Walk around and do something? Yeah. Uh -huh. Like take a, like a walk around the block kind of thing? Yeah, that's a good, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Research makes me get interested again. Like research? Some aspect of, uh -huh. of something I'm working on that I find really, really interesting. Uh -huh. Then I'll just start doing some research, which usually motivates me. Stacy says research. Yeah? That's a good idea. Yeah? Research? Although, you know, you gotta know when to stop. That's right. You gotta know when to stop. It's like somebody says, I, yeah, I have a drink. <laughs> Loosens me up a little bit. Right, and right. So yeah, you have to know to stop. Research is a is a bit of a rabbit hole. As is anything. You could walk around the block and never come back. You could get online to research and never come back. You could be gone. Right. But yeah, it's good. Yeah. yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Carol. I look I look at old notes. Okay. And looking at old notes. Maybe a line of dialogue I've written down that I want uh -huh. somebody to say or something usually similar to the same Yeah, looking at a line of dialogue. Or to start something new. Into what? Or to start something that I had left on finished. Oh. Just as a way of getting back into it. Right, all right. That's writing. good. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Looking at old stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Staring at the ceiling. Staring at the ceiling? <laughs> that, you, know, you know why? All the ideas are like... They're all up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like you go like you're like mid. They're up there. They're actually up there. <laughs> Always. Or sometimes they're on the floor. <laughs> you know. But usually, I think I think, the, I think the activity of actually rolling your eyes up into your, you know, up like this, is a meditative is a meditation technique. And that probably stimulates some part of your brain that can relax you into finding the answers. Yeah. You what? Maybe. Maybe. Or like it's your eye muscle. You know. Different perspective. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? We don't have to answer that one. That was my question. Right. How do you get back into the project that you put aside? Right. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, so you have to switch between projects. So you say you're writing a, like a movie and a, another movie or whatever. Movie and a play, we'll say, right? For example, does that make sense? So there, um, what I do, I, I, every project has a box, right? That helps. If they have a little a, a box, yeah, an actual physical thing, so they're not all say piled up on my desk or in a drawer or something. So I put each project in its own container. That helps. Also, I can shove a lot of garbage, like all the research books, all the online material, everything I have with that for the project, put in the box. That really helps a lot, um, especially if you have a small space. You don't have like a big bookshelf where you can. You know, I don't. So, um, but what I do is in each box, if I say work on one project for a week, right? And I get an outline for it, right? And then you have to put it down because you have to work on the other project and like write a draft, and that's gonna take two and a half weeks, or three weeks, that's like. So I write myself a big note on the, uh, on, uh, 
next step, go to draft, and I take it to the box, inside the box. So when I open them, so I know that when I finish this, and I open the box, all right, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So I write myself a little note to remember, because I have no idea. I open that box, and I'm like, oh, what the fuck is this? Like, you know, but there's the note. Oh, we're going to draft, write the draft. Or rewrite the outline, or call the producer and read the outline to them, or whatever. Okay, so I write myself notes, that's one thing. And then I just put the time in. So it's really kind of basic and not very magical. But it does, it does. It, 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 something about containing it, getting it out of sight, but not out of mind. If you have a bookshelf, you can put a lot of stuff in a just a regular book box, or you can get fancy and I sort of have these red lucite boxes. I know, each one has the name of, <laughs> it's kind of weird. So I just go for one, I open the box, I do the work, I write myself a note, put the note on the box, put the box back, go to the next box like that. Boxes. It helps, it really does help. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Mm -hmm. what, what, what works for you, what do you do? You have to like get into another mindset or something? What? I mean, that's a, that's a, 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 a t I'm all about to, so that's like, ooh, that might take a while. I might get lost on the internet. So this is it. So, I know I won't get lost in the box. Because if I do, I'm in the box and it's all about that project. See? Also, where do you quit, where do you leave off from one project before you go to the next one? I say try to find definitive markers. So if you're in the middle of, say, writing an outline for your screenplay, right, don't stop and jump to the next project until you're done with the outline. Draft number one of the outline, stop. Put it in the box, write yourself a note, rewrite this outline, you know, when I get back to it, and then go to the next project, and you're going to spend a week doing research on that project, and you put that away, and you go back to it again. So make sure you have definitive markers. Don't stop in the middle of the draft to jump to another project, okay? Finish the draft, so like that, that helps. Was someone waiting there? I just, I just, uh, when you do multiple projects together, right. and relatively simultaneously, does right. one feed the other? Yes, does one feed the other? Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I think so. If they're, if they're, they should all feed, you know, it should be like a team, a family. They're all going on a road trip, you know? Um, sure, I mean, obviously, there's some, some are, they're very, very different. Woo, different time periods, different characters, some made up characters, some historical characters, so it's all over the place. But um, the idea is to feed, they will feed each other if you allow yourself a system where you can transition from one to another relatively easily. Um, so, yeah, oh yeah, they should. Yes, come on. That's a great idea. The box is like, yeah, red box, you know, the new thing. Yeah, what do you, what do you say, and what do you throw out of old work? Not oh. what you, what you, what, what you, what you, you say, well, I don't know. I mean, it depends on, it depends on the space you have. If you have a huge house. It's a downsizing. It's a downsizing. Yeah. Uh, that's, it's, uh, like I said, I mean, you've read that book, though. Yeah, the jacket. Yes. Uh, Art. Yes, yes, the idea of writing papers. Of writing papers. Like of, I said. Of all the different drafts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I, I, I really believe it. If you can, if you can, you can scan them, really, or get someone to scan them into a PDF file. You really can. I mean, you can save everything and put them in a series of boxes and label the boxes and be very tidy about it. You could do that, which is nice. I'm sure they're very tidy already, you know. Put them in folders and date them and all that. But if you really want to not see piles and piles of boxes labeled up, then buy yourself a scanner 
or you have, probably have one already, and scan the pages in and make PDFs or everything. And you have everything on a little thumb drive. And if you want to keep everything, because I can't, I don't know, I can't tell you what to throw out, but if, I can tell you how to save them more effectively. You know, and then you don't have to really think about it. What, you know, you just have to actually do the work of scanning things that you can hire someone to do it. Hire someone. Give someone a job. Yes? What's your name? I'm Kendall. Hey, Kendall. Uh, is there a point in your process when you leave the typewriter? Is there a point in my process when I leave the, leave the typewriter and go on to another one? Yeah. Well, like, you get you, involved, especially when like, kids are so good. Right. Do you, do you type on a typewriter? No, I have a computer. Oh, computer, right. So you're saying, is there a point where you should leave the computer? Yeah, yeah, or that, that mode of just, like, writing. Are there other ways you can get involved with your team? Sure, 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 sure. Because this is actually, right, so you can use this play as an example. This is like the moment when I leave the typewriter, like, I left it. See? I'm not typing right now. Right? And what am I doing? We're going to do the dialogue part of that. Right, so there is a, a natural point where you do leave. If you want to get more physically involved in what you, you know, in your writing process and not just in your head, you can so take pauses, take breaks, like you were suggesting, and walk around, dance around, maybe read back, print out a page if you want, and read it out loud. It's really, really good. Even if you're writing a novel or screenplay or whatever, it's really important to remember that you're writing, you know, something to be read and you read with your whole body, right? Um, but I say, get, I mean, don't use it as a diversion, you know, again, you, know, you want to, oh, I know I have to read it, oh, I, I like to get to the end of things, you know, but sometimes my guys there, I'm like, hey, let me read you what I just wrote, and he's like, okay, <laughs> so, like, yeah, so, you know, but I try to get to the end, the end of a scene, the end of a chapter, you know. So why do you why do you why do you ask where you're working? Well, I'm just curious. I'm working on a, a, a play. Of, it's about um, a woman in the Taiwan, uh -huh. Japanese American. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So with, with, like, are you almost finished with it? Or you, are I'm, you? No, I'm taking it scene by scene. I think I just kind of figure out what the play is more about. Yesterday, where okay. the moment. Um, but so I'm kind of like now that I'm there, I need to like go back. And you can print it out along the way if you want. And we read it, but I would say again, like I would say, write all the way to the end instead of trying to perfect the first scene. Because that's another rabbit hole. You know? Or a gopher hole. Prairie dog. I live in Texas, but prairie dogs are great. Anyway. You know? So you wanna you wanna do things in your process that are gonna help you along the way. They are gonna feed your process, right? Not detract from it and rec learn to recognize what feeds it and what doesn't. So, good question though. Okay. Yeah. I some trouble with uh, writing an outline. And I remember before you talked about um, making the index cards. Yeah. But I found that I got too carried away with the index cards. <laughs> what do you mean? It's what do you mean you got carried away with the index card? What happened? I just kept making index cards. <laughs> <laughs> Because you only wanted to have, how many did you want to have? Ten? Great. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so, guess what I'm going to say. So, yeah. take ten in the next card <laughs> and fit it on ten. Really, fit it on ten. Because it's like, oh look, I can do like a million steps before right. I get to you. <laughs> it's great, right? A million. But if I only want to take like five, Right? Just fucking take five. Right. Take ten. Take all the ten. All you do is do. So what are you going to have to see, though, in your index cards? Not all the little brilliant things that you're seeing of your play or your movie, right? You're going to see scene one, scene two, scene three. I can't jump on the table, but, right? Yeah. Four, five, ten, boom. So you're going to see the big, 
chunks of action. Right. So you're going to use the, that courage to, I know all that's there, I'm just going to see the big chunks because all I want to be looking at are 10 minutes from. Right, right. So there you go. Yeah, well that would sound so easy. Yeah, so, you <laughs> start with, what, so what's your first unit's card going to be? Starts with a B. Beginning, right? Right, right. And your last one's going to be the Good. So that's two, so you got eight more. Right, okay? Right. So then mm, little, little. So that's three, so you got seven more. Yeah. So then kind of between the beginning and the middle, you've got that's where it gets a little fuzzy. But just yeah. fucking throw one in there. Boom! Right. I know that happens. I know there's like a car chase up a mountain. Right. Right? right? Okay. And then between the middle and the end there's probably something. Right? The sunset where they make out on the beach. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta have that. Yeah. And then and then probably between that and the, the, where the main character goes, oh, this is the end is beginning now. You know, that feeling. That what's that look like? And how many cards is that? I don't know. Seven, eight, right? And then you have like a few more in the front and then you have your ten minutes cards. And then you can flip through them really fast and feel like you're seeing your whole movie or your whole play, right? right, right. And then you get that good feeling. Instead of that, oh shit, how am I going to do this feeling? See, you know how to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it's instead of good people go, oh, I can just make one more index card. I'll just make another index card. Right. No, no. Yeah. Beginning, end. Right. And then you only get eight more. Right. So it's a discipline thing. You're going to be, you know what I mean? It's like, do you like to eat, I don't know, what do you like to eat? French fries? Okay, so you could eat a million French fries. Or you could eat like just a plate full or a serving, right? Okay, so you, you don't have to do this. Okay. It's a good question. Oh, it's a great question. I just make, well, I can make it like a joke, like it's easy, but it's actually not it's really hard. And it's a really good question, so. Okay. And the topic of outlines, Melania yes. wanted to Oh, hey, Melania from Florida. Yeah. She wanted to tell you uh, that with the advice you gave her, she was able to outline her play. Wow! She was encouraged by your work. Oh, thank you, Mommy. I know. I, 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 I won't make a joke about your name again, but thank you so much. So, Melania, she wrote us uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about outlines. And she outlines. And now you have to take a breath, and you have to just dive in, Melania, and you have to write your play. If that's what you want to do. That's the next step. It's like, it's like, and you don't worry about it not being like perfect right off the bat. Because it means it's shitty. We can have a let's write the shittiest draft, first draft competition. But I would win, so don't bother. Because I can beat you on that. <laughs> yeah. after I left on Monday, someone has, I think, is handing me an opportunity that it's kind of a stretch and not really my genre, but I have something to give her, so I'm just trying to figure out, I'm like, okay, I can outline it, I have to have 30 pages of it by June 1, and I'm just trying to figure out what, I don't know how the piece that I have is kind of, I, I was playing with the idea, and now it's like, oh, this Something. I'm just trying to figure out what I'm just trying to figure out if it'll work in what she, what this opportunity is because I I don't really write for children but it's right. a it's right. a great opportunity to bring all that in so I guess my question is you know discipline and quickly researching what that's supposed to look like and trying to I'm a little it's a little nerve wracking. So you have an you have an opportunity. Someone's giving you a wonderful opportunity to write in a field that doesn't really feel like your kind of field, but you can do it. Yeah, I mean, I just I can tell we're gonna we're gonna butt heads on topics because the thing is that there are things I want to address and this is a person who's no very conservative. So we're gonna right. run into I I framed it as it's you know family, but it's a same-sex couple, right. and I'm going to hand that off, and I'm, 
I'm trying to figure out an attack the way to defend that. Does it seem like it's going to be a writing project or a long process where you're defending your what you think is should be happening in the world? Okay. Just be just, just But I want to honor my my process as opposed to getting myself into a pigeonhole that I didn't realize was until this until we had the talk. Right. right. Here I can't really do this, but I know you're a writer, so oh, take a good. look at this. Uh -huh. You know, but it's going to be something that I'll go through her, and I don't want to be like, don't read it. So, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to prepare for disappointment for say, I, I have a problem. Well, but in the meet, between the time that she reads it and that, and you have disappointment in a conversation with her, will you be able to write something that's 30 pages, and will that help your process as a writer? I, yes, I think so. Then you should do it regardless. Oh, I, no, I'm yeah. going to. I'm just trying to find the nerves. Um, it's oh. giving me, I'm just sitting and writing going, no, I, I need to honor this, and I'm just, it's very nerve-wracking oh. speaking in a, a place about, I'm just like, I, this is out of my element, this is like trying to add myself to, you know, I don't, maybe I do write for children, since this is the opportunity that has been presented to me, I'm just kind of, kind of finding, I was like, oh, this is, I'm, I'm finding myself in a detour, and so I'm a little, kind of, it's made me frazzled in a different right. way than normal. Well, <laughs> I think you just put the time in, right. see what happens, you know, and it's a wonderful opportunity. And you'll see what it is, that's all, yeah. you know, that's all. And it just knows that all the questions that are coming up for you right now would come up uh, regardless of the, the activity. The questions that you have right now about being frazzled and out of your element and all those things, all those questions would be coming up for you regardless. Yeah. <laughs> right? Because because yeah. that we, we, we yeah we, it's 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 that's what happens. We have a set of questions and we look for opportunities to ask them. And so you find you found another opportunity to ask those questions of yourself, which is good. So ask them and you know what I'm gonna say, put the time into the writing. Yeah. You know, so don't let the questions detour you. Don't yeah, let the, don't, let the, don't let the conversation with those questions detail you if you want to do your writing. If you want to sit around and have a conversation with the questions, then go ahead, but your writing will be No, as I'm typing, I... There you go. Like, yeah, keep, keep, keep the fingers moving. Keep the fingers moving, you know what I mean? Keep the fingers moving, it's very important. Good question, though, because yeah, there's a lot of opportunities out there. Mm-hmm. Yes, hi. Uh, this is just, um, you, you said this is the book you all read, but I didn't. Uh, and, oh. and I didn't get the title. What was oh. the title? What was I talking about? The Magic of Tiny. Oh, the ma oh, yeah, the Magic, what is it called? The Life Changing Magic Art of Tidying Up. What is it called? There you go. You're going to go look at it. Great. It, it's a book about clearing clutter from your house. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one of those books. It's very, I mean, I, I didn't really read it. I read, like, the first chapter and went, like, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, but it's okay. It's the life-changing magic of tidying up. The life-changing magic of tidying up, which is supposed okay, to be an audio a brilliant book. book. It's supposed to be a magic. wonderful book. Oh, yeah. And you can what? They have an audio book, so you can listen to it in vacuum. You can listen to it as a vacuum, which is brilliant, really <laughs> Stacey. Okay? Yes. What's it called again? The magical, yes. Yeah. This is a no way, uh, this is a no way, an endorsement of the <laughs> Except we do, yeah, I mean, it's people read it and... Sure. And tidy up. Yeah. But I would say, don't read the book. Do your writing instead. Don't look for it. Yeah, now I'll spend the rest of 2017 tidy. Because that's what I should be doing because I'm such a slob. Great. No. No, no, no. No. But yes, it's a tidy. It's a book about tidy. Clean. Idea if you're like starting 10,000 different things, yes, 
Yes. Have you like? Yes. Do you have a? a yes. I don't know some. You yes, do. I, do, I do, I do. I do. I have a lot of tricks. I love when people ask me for tricks because I have so many tricks for things. I know Alexis is like laughing, but I do have a lot of tricks. Um, so it, usually my tricks all uh, stem out of this one wonderful topic. Have you ever been on a date? Great. Okay. Have you ever uh, dated? Uh, you know, not like at the same time, but at the same time with people. Uh, yeah. Okay, <laughs> right, okay, great. And then you, did you ever come to the moment where you decided, like, I'd rather be with them than them? Um, yeah. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. So that's why you decide. <laughs> you just decide. You know, you know, you're working on a lot of your projects, right? And, and if they're all sort of equally maybes, i.e., you know, Steven Spielberg hasn't come and said, I want you to write this! And the other ones are something you were planning to do three years ago. Then, yeah. So that those aren't weighted equally, right? So that maybe they're all equal, like you have six ideas written down in your notebook. How do you do it? You could, it depends on what they are, okay? If they are um, songs, for example, you could spend a whole day sitting in your apartment and work on each one of them for an hour, which is what I do, which is really fun. And you get a lot of growth on each one of them. But that's a short, a very short form, right? If they are, uh, plays or whatever, you just go through the list and say, which one is going to make me the happiest? Which one do I think about when I'm not thinking about the others? Right? You can sort of think about one for 15 minutes and then think about another one. Which one is going to be the most fun? You know? Which one? I, I want to do something quickly. Which one can I do quickly? And then I'd like to do something that might take six months. Which one might be that? You know, so you have different criteria. Um, you, see, you see what I'm saying? You're looking yeah, yeah. by, I know. Does that make sense? You, you, have, you have some that are, that are, are they different weights? Are they different sizes? Are they different? Yeah, like impose some kind of structure to help you decide that, okay? Well, you could say, like, which one makes me laugh? Yeah. I, oh, every time I think about that one, I laugh. Do I want to laugh? Yeah, I want a good laugh. I'll work on that one. I'll give myself a month and see where it goes. Then I'll turn to the one that I want a really good political, you know, fist in the air kind of thing. That one, yeah, that's the one. I'm going to work on that one for a month next. Or I really want to do that one now. And then I'm going to do the funny one later. It's, you see, it's just kind of what mood you want to be in. It's, it's, it, does that make sense? Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you give yourself a time, like I'm going to work on it for a month or for two weeks, you could say, and see how it feels. Then I'm going to jump to the next project. And then you can have a whole wall full of Lucite boxes. <laughs> that's, what, that's what happens. You have a whole wall full of Ikea. I have, I have a whole wall. Marshall? Michael's. Michael's. Ideas boxes. Okay, ideas boxes. Yeah, they have boxes. And that's a, a nice thing too. Once you start getting them going, you can have boxes for each one, which is very helpful when you come back to it. It's very helpful. Oh, like one more question? Like one more question. Like one more question. Um, oh, sorry, you have one. Oh, oh no, I was just smiling. <laughs> She's just smiling. Oh, oh okay. Um, okay. I have a question. Um, I, I, I wrote a play which uh, was more sort of geared towards um, adults. Right. Um, uh, and I want to sort of use that play again, but now I'm accepted in a festival where they want it more for children. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wonder how can I sort of use it, because the structure is good. Yes. How can I use that play, but make it adap uh, adapted so that, that oh, kids yeah. can also follow and, and, right. and enjoy it? Right. Um, right. That's a whole, yeah. Do you... Um, it's a play, right? Yeah. Do you have you seen a lot of children's theater? Um, not a lot, but, not, but some. Some. So, yeah. so you know what what's going to work yeah. for for kids? Yeah. Because I mean that, that's a tricky thing because kids now watch all kind of kids like Star Wars and, and adults like Star Wars, but you know that kind of movie. So it's a little tricky, but um, it's tricky because a lot of Things for children tend to, people think, oh, I'm going to write something, I'm going to kind of dumb it down. And I don't think that's what you want, that's not what you want to do. I would just say tell the story, just take out the things that are 
perhaps obviously disturbing to children. You know, like don't tell them that the sun one day will explode. And you know, that shit like that. Kids, I mean, most kids <laughs> get upset. My son like goes, ah, you know. So take out maybe think, and maybe find a way to talk about complex subjects in a way that you would talk to your kids or your nieces and nephews. Or yeah, it's it's a it's a story of a, a very adventurous person. Yeah. Um, who is also a big kid, yeah. but he is also um, a philosopher and he right. has so many great ideas and you sort of want to bring some of his right. philosophies, but, that, but then without being too, becoming too complicated. Right, right, right. But I, I really, uh, why don't you imagine you're telling it to a group of kids? Yeah. Just imagine that those are the people sitting in the audience. You know what I mean? And when they start, maybe when they start to fidget, because I wouldn't say like across the board, dumb it down. Kids understand philosophy, as you know. Kids understand complex ideas, as you know. So instead of across the board, dumb it down, imagine reading it to a group of kids. Yeah. Well, with a play, you can visualize a lot. Sure. Imagine, imagine it running in front of a group of kids. Yeah. And find maybe very concrete and more effective ways to deliver these philosophical points. You guys can talk later, but I think have a lot. I, I, I just, I think we're almost. Is there anyone else with a burning question? Or? <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.